Hello and welcome back to this channel. Dear students, today's session is fiber attenuation measurement. Attenuation is the reduction in the signal strength whenever the signals, optical signals are traveling through the fiber optic cable because of various reasons, the strength of signal is getting reduced. That is called an attenuation. Now to measure the attenuation, different techniques are available, but the most important or most commonly used technique is the cutback method. So we'll discuss this cutback method in detail. From the exam point of view, you may expect the question like this, draw the diagram of fiber attenuation measurement by making use of cutback technique and explain the same. Or the question may be like this, what are the different techniques uh, used to measure the fiber attenuation and uh, elaborate or explain the accuracy of each uh, method. So first we will talk about the cutback method. This is the block diagram of cutback method which is used to measure the attenuation in, in the fiber optic cable. At the input side, we are making use of white light source. This is the light source which may be tungsten or halogen lamp which generates the white light. Then we are using a lens. We know that the function of this lens is to focus the signal properly. This is an important block. This is the chopper. This chopper chops the input signal. Chopping means making on and off because we want uh, the stable reading, we don't want any variations in the output of the reading. So this chopper is used. The output of this chopper is also applied to lock in amplifier, which is connected at the receiver side. This part represents the receiver end. So this chopper is again connected to lock in amplifier. So by choosing the proper frequency, making on and off of the incoming light signals, this signal is also applied to lock in amplifier, which locks the incoming signal <coughs> and accordingly the result is recorded as well as displayed. Then we are making use of monochromator. As the word indicates, chroma means color, mono means single. So this block selects a particular wavelength or a single wavelength for which we want to make the measurement. Then again we are making use of a lens and its output is given to the order sorting filter. This block is especially required in case of multi-mode fibers. We know that in case of multi-mode fibers, there are many modes, especially if we are choosing higher order modes, then there may be fluctuations in the uh, output. So we want to block higher order modes. We want to select only lower order modes. This is done by order sorting filters. Then its output is again applied to the lens for focusing this is the reference signal which is used as the name indicates it is used for the reference purpose using lens this output is allowed to give to this micro scrambler now again this micro scrambler is used in case of multi-mode fibers because it is very much required that the reading should be taken under the steady state condition if you don't want to use this micro scrambler block then at the starting, before taking the actual reading, some dummy fiber is connected. The readings are started. Once the things get settled, then only original fiber for which you have to make the measurement is connected. But you can well use of this micro scrambler block if you are using the multi-mode fiber uh, to adjust the uh, power fluctuations at the output. Next is cladding mode stripper. We know that there can be leakage of the power uh, from the core layer to the cladding layer. So to avoid this, this cladding mode stripper is used. Actually, it is S-shaped groove, which is made by using the material Teflon and that material consists of the glycerin. So it is filled with the glycerin. Glycerin is having refractive index less than or slightly greater than the core refractive index of the core of the fiber optic cable. So because of this, uh, the light which is getting uh, escaped from the core and trying to enter into the cladding layer is avoided. This same, then this, this signal is given or applied to the fiber optic cable under test. Again, at the output end of this fiber optic cable, we are using cladding mode stripper for the same purpose just now we discussed. Then this output is given to the indexed matched photo detector. Actually, we know that the photo detector is used to detect the signal, that means Particularly, it is used to convert optical signal into electrical signal. So APD is used, that is avalanche photodiode or avalanche photodetector is used. 
it is index matched that means some type of gel is used to properly match the index then its output is given to the lock-in amplifier we just now discussed the chopper is also connected to lock-in amplifier so it avoids the fluctuations in the readings of the output and then the readings are recorded as well as displayed now once the set setup is done then original fiber optic cable is connected for which we want to make the measurement the readings are taken then that fiber optic uh, cable is taken out this fiber optic cable is cut at two meters from the input end and again it is connected after cutting and again the readings are repeated so two times readings are taken one with the original fiber optic cable then cut the fiber optic cable again attach it and perform the same readings by keeping input conditions constant same and then the readings are taken so two times readings are taken then the attenuation is given by the formula alpha in db alpha is attenuation in decibels is 10 upon l1 minus l2 l1 is the length of original fiber optic cable l2 is the length when you cut the fiber optic cable and again take the readings that is uh, the length l2 log into log to the base 10 v2 upon v1 v1 is the voltage corresponding to L1 that is original length of optical cable V2 is the voltage corresponding to L2 that means whenever you will cut the fiber optic cable that length is L2 and corresponding voltage is V2 same expression can be written in terms of power so this is about the cut back method which is used to measure the fiber attenuation the next part is the different uh, fiber attenuation measurement techniques from the exam point of view you may expect the question like this what are the different methods used for measuring the attenuation of optical cable and comment on the accuracy that is important part so the three common methods are used for measuring the attenuation and other fiber attenuation we'll discuss every method and then we will discuss the accuracy of every method first is cut back method just now we discussed this method this is the most accurate method but the only problem with this method is that uh, we have already discussed the block diagram and working how the the uh, measurements are done only drawback of this method is that first you need to take the readings with original fiber then cut the fiber uh, from the input end approximately at two meters and then use that cut fiber connect it by keeping the initial condition set again take the readings so you have to get the value you will get the value of attenuation by making the measurement two times first with the original fiber optic cable then cut the fiber optic cable and again take the measurement of either voltage or power then using the formula we can calculate the uh, attenuation taking place in the fiber optic cable second is insertion loss method actually this method is used you can say for the daily use purposes the this method is comparatively very simple without connecting the fiber optic cable first measure the output power of a light source then note down that readings then connect the fiber optic cable and at the output of fiber optic cable again make the measurement of power so naturally the difference between the two power readings once you haven't connected fiber optic cable directly you are making measurement of the output power of a source secondly you are connecting the fiber optic cable that means light is transmitting through the cable and at the output again you are measuring the power so difference between the these two will directly give you the value of attenuation but the problem is that the connectors should be properly connected that means there should be minimal loss otherwise the readings will not be accurate so this is the insertion loss method which is the simpler method and as i said it is used for daily use purposes next is otdr that is optical time domain reflectometer we have already studied otdr uh, in detail presently as far as this attenuation measurement is concerned the light of burst that means uh, uh, the pulses light pulses are allowed to pass through the fiber optic cable we know that otdr optical time domain uh, optical time domain reflectometer works on the principle of back scattered light so you are applying burst that is pulses of input light in the fiber optic cable some of the light rays gets reflected back get, gets back scattered then as the time increases as the time passes the scattered light goes on getting weak and 
you will have to measure the strength of that light then by measuring that strength we can calculate the attenuation and uh, naturally we have studied how the uh, displays obtained in case of uh, OTDR optical time domain reflectometer then making your use of that graph we can measure the attenuation now these are the three methods three major methods used uh, to measure the attenuation in case of an uh, optical cable. As far as the accuracy is concerned, this cutback method gives the maximum accuracy. So more, for more accurate result, we need to make use of the cutback uh, technique cutback method. But the drawback as, uh, as I told earlier that you need to destroy the cable, you need to cut the fiber optic cable. So that is the only drawback. Next is insertion loss method. It is less accurate compared to the cutback method because the accuracy depends on the connectors that you are using in the system to connect the fiber optic cable. Next is OTDR method. It is the very least accurate method compared to the remaining two. So it is not used uh, majorly in practical applications because you you are relying you are dependent on the back scattered light there can be back scattering because of many other things like breaks cracks in the cable so otdr is not preferred for measuring the attenuation rather otdr is mainly preferred to detect the location of breaks location of cracks in the fiber optic cable so this is about the different methods and comment uh, as far as the accuracy of all methods are concerned now to get an idea about this attenuation or insertion loss measurement, let us discuss one numerical. The given problem is power at the photo detector prior to the to the inserting the fiber is P1 is 0.51 milliwatt. This is the given power before inserting the fiber optic cable for the measurement purpose. And the power level within optical filter in the link is P2 that is 0.43 milliwatt. What is the insertion loss of the device it's very straightforward very simple numerical we have a direct formula insertion loss is given by 10 log to the base 10 p1 upon p2 so simply you just have to put the values the given values of p1 and p2 both are in milliwatts so you don't have to make any conversion we can keep it as it is so it is 10 log of log to the base 10 p1 is 0.51 upon 0.43 so if you solve this this answer is 0.741 db so this is the amount of loss in decibels that is the amount of insertion loss now dear students that's it for today's session so thank you thanks a lot for watching this video